Hello again and welcome to the final video. So what we're going to do is talk about batch rendering and anybody that was in class this morning uh, will know that, uh, especially in the second part, that everything went wrong and I broke Maya somehow, uh, which I'm hopefully getting refixed very soon. So essentially in uh, batch rendering, what we're going to try and do is move away from play blast rendering, which as we know, play blast rendering is a really simple but effective way of getting videos out of our scene using just the viewport. Now, there's a couple of things that I want to mention here. So there's a few things that I've got enabled uh, in this file by default that you can look at at your leisure. There is two options up here in your top left uh, in the uh, viewport uh, options areas. One is resolution gate, which if I disable that, you can see how that really affects things. By enabling resolution gate, I force my viewport to see at the same size as the resolution I want to export at. Currently that's set to 1280 by 720, so that's a standard HD 720 uh, resolution. Uh, I've also got the mask enabled, and the mask is simply that uh, whitish area outside. Uh, I like to have that on because I think it's good in order to see, uh, you know, the areas that will be excluded whenever, uh, whenever it comes to rendering. So we're moving past the Play Blast render, which is of course just using the viewport, which is using the viewport hardware 2.0, which is of course what we talked about earlier, in order to create the image that we're looking at right now. And the reason that's not such a bad idea is because we know that when we play black, uh, play back, um, we don't see any of that information because we've disabled uh, so many of the uh, objects whenever we're scrubbing or playing. So it's useful, but it's not ideal, and we don't have direct control over any of the specific resolution features, uh, where it's being saved, and of course, how, how we make that easy to import into other uh, footage. So there's a couple of things that we need to think about first of all uh, before we um, before we start batch rendering. So part one of this is about taking a wider view of what this video uh, does. So number one, I'm going to scrub all the way back to frame zero. Currently, my setup in this corridor is really simple, uh, and we've been through this already once, but I'll show it again. If I scrub from zero to three hundred, we can see it's about Bob. He leaves comes out here, goes for a walk, and eventually ends up over here. So it's uh, it's roughly 300 frames long. It plays at 24 frames a second. I can see that down here. Um, so it's it's uh, we can probably say that's roughly uh, it, well, it's certainly over 10 seconds. Um, I think in total that adds up to uh, well, I can't even do the maths in that. I'll be honest, <laughs> it's not my forte. I'll be honest. Uh, so 300 divided by 24 equals 12 seconds. So the entire video lasts 12 and a half seconds. It's a very short scene and it's not eating into my budget considerably. But you'll notice that I have three separate cameras in this scene. So as Bob comes out here for the first 100 frames, this camera here catches him exiting a door. So there's one. And as he comes around that corner, this camera captures that and it's animated so it will move. And as he comes around here, this final camera over here catches him as he comes towards the exit. So, what does that look like in uh, real time? Well, let's have a look. So if you go to Panels, and go to Perspective, and go to Cam 1 Intro, and then scroll for the first 100 frames, we'll see, obviously, so until about here we can see Bob leaving. Oh, and he's gone. So now I want to flip over to camera number two. So perspective, camera two, uh, and continue scrubbing. That's Bob coming around the corner to an animated camera. And as he swings around here, it's flipped to the last camera panels, and that's camera number three. And of course, we've got a little bit of a clipping issue there, but nothing major. And as he comes towards the exit, another animated camera comes down to meet him. And we see that lovely sun in the background, and it's all good. Um, and I really like it. It's just a simple short scene. It's not saying much. It's just about a character getting from A to B. Nothing major. But those three separate cameras allow for three separate shots that makes for a much more interesting edit. And what we want to do is we want to export those. So it's important to think that we want to export three shots. One is, of course, uh, frame, which is camera one, which is frame one through to frame 100. So you want to write that one down. Camera 2, which is frame 100 
so roughly frame uh, 200 and of course that last one and you can see I've made this nice and easy it's sort of 100 chunks frame 200 to frame 300 and of course we can do any editing we want inside of Premiere Pro in order to make that feel or look a little smoother if we so wish so what we're going to do is we're going to deal with cam 1 intro first of all so we're going to uh, change this bottom bar instead of having 300 frames we're going to drop that down so it just uh, takes the first 100 frames that's all I want for now you can have a, a couple of frame overspill if you really want but I don't think it's necessary so we've constrained our timeline to just worry about these first 100 frames and what we're going to do is we're going to batch render those frames out except we're going to render them out as individual frames that's going to be 100 pictures essentially um, and then we're going to turn those pictures into video information so the way to make this easier is is to start thinking about using what you know a renderer so there's things that we don't need to use first of all so let's have a look what i want you to do is to head up to these uh, movie board slots here we can see the options are open render view render the current frame ipr render the current frame which you don't need to worry about and of course we have display render settings so let's take a note at the render settings first of all and click that little slot with the symbols and here we go we get more options than you can shake a, a cat at but my render is currently set to maya hardware 2.0 and that's what i want the vast majority of you to use this is your standard renderer it looks just like the render we have in here and if i give that a little test render we essentially see the same thing the difference is is that it's now at the absolute full resolution that i've asked for which is obviously that 720p resolution instead of the viewport resolution and we're not getting these weird white bars at the side so if you ever want to check your uh, your current render you just need to click this little white slat at the top which will display the render view and the full picture that has been rendered we have no extra information being pasted on top this time which is great news for us and of course inside of here we can actually play around with certain settings such as exposure uh an aperture as well um but you don't really need to worry about that in general so just close that um just worry that it re yeah happily does it resets all those so there's a few things you need to go through your render layer should be set to master layer by default your render layer should be using maya hardware 2.0 there are others available but don't worry about software vector or arnold for now Arnold is a full production render, uh, uh, render system. It's fantastic, but we don't need to learn it for this semester. We certainly don't need it for this module. But if you have been tinkering with Arnold, you know that it comes with its own complexities, such as it doesn't use Maya's standard lighting system. So that can, uh, that can make things a little bit difficult for people. So we'll ignore that from now. What you want to do is give your file name a prefix. I stick with test scene in this case because I know I'm just testing things. I don't want to save any of this out just yet. For now, I'm sticking with a JPEG image format. Nothing too fancy going on here. But the really important one is that you change the frame slash animation extension to something that can handle numbers. So you'll notice if you click here, there are a whole bunch of options. The first two name is for single pictures. Don't worry about that and then name.extension don't worry about that the rest all have the little hashtag in it that represents a number my highest recommendation goes to name underscore uh, number dot ext so essentially it's going to be the file name then an underscore then the frame number dot jpeg so that's all that means it's just the format that which your file will be saved at so name underscore hashtag uh, dot ext is fine so it's a little complex for now the frame padding should be set to three or above this is essentially the number of digits that uh, will pad the the number of frames as they are saved because we only have 300 frames in total a padding of three is fine we don't need anything else four would be too much five's insane be careful so three is probably a good setting however if your scene is running into the frames of thousands you'll probably want to set the frame padding to four 
However, do remember that if you're in the thousands area, something's probably gone wrong and you should try to divide your scene up into something smaller. Now this port, uh, this part down here, the frame range is extremely important, okay? So start frame is one, and of course we know that's where it starts and we want this to end by frame 100. So I'm telling Maya here, I want you to render from frame one and I want you to stop rendering at frame 100. And of course, by frame, I just want you to rent every one frame. So we're going to get 100 pictures being taken here, which is fine. And of course, we can also choose which camera these frames are coming from. This is very vital. So for, of course, the, la the cameras that your scene has will appear here. So I don't want it to be my perspective camera. I know this first area is my camera number one. And of course you can set resolutions here such as there's a bunch of, of uh, pre-fit pre-made ones here uh, I'm just sticking with HD 720 for now and we can see that's 1280 by 720 uh, And try not to change anything else here. That's probably fine for now Don't worry if you mess anything up. It's normal. You can always go back to the presets load a preset and go back to your default settings if you're worried about having misclicked anything. Okay, so that's my render settings done, but I'm not batch rendering yet. Remember what batch rendering means. It simply means rendering lots of things. It's a batch of things. So we're not doing that. So anytime I do click this little render icon, I'm only rendering a single frame so that I can see what I'm rendering at, and that's fine. I'm going to go back to these options again. Remember that there is a second tab, which is the Maya Hardware 2.0, which is all those options we looked at earlier. So we can specify if we want higher quality results here, which is sometimes what people are looking for, such as putting your anti-aliasing up, uh, maybe playing more with uh, higher quality screen space. So if you're now knowing at this stage everything's fine, you might want to up some of these settings for the final render just to get that little bit extra polish on things. But that's really up to you. All right, so now we're ready to batch render and this bit couldn't be any easier. So to avoid any further complications, I'm just going to double check my, uh, my current settings with Maya. Um, so Maya... Um, and it's going to be projects, default, and then images. And I'm just going to clear all of this out. So I'm just checking my uh, current uh, Maya uh, render folder, which is filled with stuff. And I just don't want it to be there anymore. All right, so it's probably worth me typing that out for you. So remember that where your default Maya images are stored on your computer, um, they will appear down here. So for instance, you can see there's my username. So users, my username, documents, Maya, projects, default. Um, so the default folder is where you want to be. Then inside that default folder, you will find an images folder. Not, Don't worry about the autosave stuff for now. So I'm ready to batch render. I've set my rendering up. I've told Maya that I want it to render frame one all the way through to frame 100, which should capture this scene because it's using that specific camera. So let's give it a go. In order to batch render, you need to switch from the modeling mode and you need to change over to rendering up here in your top uh, left. And simply scroll over to render and then click batch render which should appear here and that will force Maya to do some thinking and you'll see that happen right now so uh, batch render continue okay so we now see this result rendering with Maya hardware 2.0 so Maya is doing some thinking it's processing what's about to happen and then we were we're going to see it generate a bunch of files down here and that's how we know things are working because this little status icon to, oh, here we go. See one all the way through to 100. Perfect. Result, rendering complete. See your render log.txt for information. No thanks. So uh, I've got uh, that folder open. I'll just drag that over. And what you can see here is that we have 100 pictures that essentially make up 
uh, that animation as I cycle through them you can actually watch that animation maybe play out uh, as we go along we can see as well that the actual render is a little bit darker than you might imagine as well so if I open up one of these pictures it's darker than it appears originally that is because between Maya the rendering and certain settings there are all sorts of gamma options at play now that is very detailed image science that we don't want to talk about just now. So you can always fix these things later on though. Remember that inside of Premiere Pro we could do some post-production using certain filters such as brightness, contrast or colour. Uh, oh, well you'll be glad to know that my Maya just closed itself down. <laughs> so I'll just load that back up. Um, in terms of a series of problems I've been having today, this is certainly one of them. Maya has betrayed me immensely. Um, and uh, please ignore my Steam profile in the background there. It shouldn't be running. <laughs> so I'm just going to uh, let that load back up and hopefully we can pull our Maya. So file and obviously recent files. Um, and it should have... Um, uh, my recent increments there just make sure that it's the last one I saved I might just go to open scene and go up autosave there we go so you can see that autosave feature is really useful and I can get access to the last one I saved just there open that up don't save continue so many ways a pretty handy display if anything and we're right back where we started so anyway sorry about that delay anyway uh what we have to deal with is we now have to turn these pictures into video files okay so this is where you'll want to load up uh premiere so adobe premiere pro 2018 loading up this gorgeous image here can't get enough of that This video is getting pretty long, so uh, hopefully I'll wrap this up quickly. My poor upload will be insane. I'm just loading up uh, an untitled project folder here. This is it's a mess about for me. I just want to show you how we import image sequences more than anything. Okay, uh, so I'll do that in the next video. You'll find that on the next slide of this presentation because I want to cut this video short so I can upload it quicker on my dodgy internet connection. Uh, right, so that'll do for now. We've got uh, our Maya. We've batch rendered a hundred images out and now we want to turn those images into video. So I'll, I'll stop this video for now and we'll chop things up a bit.